everyone. Welcome back to People You Should Know in Kansas City. I am so thrilled to introduce you all today to Dr. Cass Butler Dunlap. Cass, thanks so much for joining me today. Thank you for having me. And oh my gosh, I haven't heard that designator in quite a while. <laughs> thanks for reminding me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, you know, being, you know, we both were in higher ed and it's really important I used to always tell people, you don't have to call me doctor. And then it's like, no, wait, we both worked really hard for that. We did. Thanks for having me. This is a full circle moment. So I'm excited to be here. It really, really is. And I am thrilled to have you. So can you share a little bit about, about kind of your journey and who you are and, and what you're doing now? Yeah, absolutely. So again, I'm Cass, and I currently work for a company called Positive Intelligence. And Positive Intelligence is the mental fitness company. We're based out of San Francisco, California. And what we do is we have this research-based operating system that really helps business to business or coaches of all sorts of practices um, strengthen those areas which serve them in their lives. So think personal or professional mastery, and then conversely, quiet those areas in their brain that cause negative emotion or negative response or otherwise like sabotage you, right? So um, my role is a coaching operations director and pretty much I'm responsible for making sure that the coaching operation practice is aligned to other areas of the business and creating a scalable rhythm of business as we continue to grow, you know, removing tension as our team identifies it and things of that nature. But that's where I'm finding lots of joy right now. I love it. I love it. Well, and so we used to work together back in the day for Webster University. We we had our tenure there and, and got to know each other and then kind of want, wound around. And so I'm so thrilled that we're reconnected. Absolutely. So with Catalyst Development, we talk about leadership skills being at all different stages and levels. So we have early career, emerging leaders, strategic leaders, kind of that mid-career or executive leader. So how do you identify yourself on that kind of journey? Hmm. Interesting. So the company I'm in right now is not very hierarchical, and I love that, but I'd still say, so we get to lean into parts of the business where we have strengths. However, I'd categorize myself if I had to do that as strategic leader right now, but I think it's between the spectrum, right, of strategic and executive, but I've been in points in my career. Yeah. And that's what I love about this kind of career road, because everyone who I've asked this question is like, well, I'm here sometimes and here another place. And it really highlights for people that our journey is is different and we kind of go different places. Absolutely. And the need to be agile in your mindset, right? And to just embrace those opportunities as they present themselves. Yeah. And I, I think that's right. That's a part of what you're doing, right? Helping us to identify ways that we can easily move along that spectrum. Right. Exactly. Exactly. So can you share a story with us about one of the biggest pivot points in your career? Kind of what was it and how did you work your way through it? Yeah, I think that so early on, I never saw myself like when I first started working and, you know, spent probably eight or nine years in the workforce. I didn't see myself as um, a leader of people. Right. Like owning that position. I really enjoyed the work that I was doing and had no desire and um you know, an opportunity became available and like a spark was lit in me. Like I kind of quietly or influenced decisions that happened. So why not just kind of take that up a notch and step into this leadership position? However, I wasn't able to do that because I didn't have the experience, right? So I kept running into that roadblock where you don't have the um, educational background. You don't have the experience. My um, bachelor's degree was in, in marketing. So I decided to go to school and get an MBA and kind of remove that obstacle, that roadblock, and ended up stepping into a leadership position for a client of mine. And that's how I got into higher ed. So it wasn't by design. I didn't, I didn't see that for myself, but I I stopped fearing, right, what leadership meant. And then I chased that opportunity. Yeah. And I think that's such a good point too, because so often we get to whether it's a real hard pivot point or just kind of a next stop in our career where it's like, oh, we need to do a little development on ourselves, whether it's a formal degree or just some training. 
Yep. And I am, so I went the formal degree route, but I, right now I'm a big advocate of micro credentials and in, in leadership, right? So whether that's executive presence, whether that's, you know, how to lead, whether that's building teams, I think that I really love what I'm seeing in that space. And it's a way to develop those skills without developing, you know, a big, big um, financial burden to right. accompany it, right? Yeah, I yeah. agree. We are totally on the same page with that. <laughs> <laughs> so one of, this is my favorite question I ask in this, in, in this video series, but really anytime I'm doing leadership training, what is your leadership superpower? If people were, if we were to ask other people, they would say Cass's superpower is... I would say it is helping others to lead from where they are and not being, you know, bogged down and being myopic about what leadership is and to think of leadership as a mindset and to help them develop behaviors and attitudes to, you know, create influence and impact on their teams, right? And so, um, you know, making decisions on the spot, right? And not waiting for other parts of the business to catch up, but making decisions, um, smart decisions, let me say that, um, minimal risk. My risk tolerance might be a little bit higher than someone else's, but, um, and I'd say decisions to help keep the business moving forward. So I really like helping others think, don't think about the position, think about the behaviors and you are capable of that. And if you're not capable of that, let me help you. And we, so positive intelligence, we call it blameless discernment. I personally would say, we attack the problem if a mistake was made, right? If you made a decision that you thought would move the business forward and it didn't, let's address why so that you can be confident in your decision making and keep on leading from where you are. Yeah, I love that. And I think so often people think I have to have a title or I have to have this or that to be a leader. And it's nowhere at all important, you know, as long as you have that influence that you talked about. Absolutely. And so I think it's just so valuable that um, I currently work in an environment where that is the mindset. So that was the beauty of um, me joining Positive Intelligence, but also with what you're doing to help people understand where they are on the spectrum, whether it's emerging, whether it's strategic, whether it's executive, and just how to be confident in their decisions and not get distracted by titles or intimidated by titles. Yeah, 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 yeah. Absolutely. Well, and that goes nicely into what advice would you give your younger self? Oh, God, so much. <laughs> but let's stick to leadership. Let's stick to leadership. I would say um, to establish boundaries early and then respect those boundaries that I set. I used to say yes to so much that didn't serve me, so much that I didn't want to do. And I don't want to operate from a place of regret because I won't say it was a waste of time, but it wasn't maybe the best use of my time. I did learn some lessons from those things. And so right now I'm very comfortable and confident in saying no mm -hmm. and maybe having to help someone realize it. I'm not saying no to hurt you. I'm saying no to help me, right? <laughs> to keep my sanity or whatever it is, right? Um, and maybe you don't realize you don't want me in that space, but I am, I tell my younger self to not be scared of the word no and to set some very healthy boundaries for your professional career early on. Know what you want and what you don't want. Yeah. yeah. I think that's such an important lesson too. I think, especially as we're younger in our career, we think if we say no, that people will limit us. And it's, that's not the case. Yeah. Yeah. So I think that's important too. Yeah. I love it. So how do you intentionally continue to work on your leadership skills? What do you do? I had to get better about this. <laughs> let me just admit that I had to get better about this because I have let my cup get very empty where I didn't feel like I was um, doing my team a, a good service, right? Because I wasn't pouring into myself. So it's actually things like catalyst development, right? I will find some, I, I will find somewhere where I feel like I'm not strong or where I used to be strong. And maybe that is atrophying and I'll work on that, right? I, I consume a lot of podcasts. Like I love podcasts of all types and um, Audible. So I, I listen to or read quite a few books, but it's a plethora of things. So it depends on what headspace I'm in at that time. But I have intentionally, and I had to because 
I have got to a point in my career where I had to take a break. Like I had to take a break because I wasn't filling my cup and I was drained and I wasn't creative and I wasn't happy with the me that was showing up every day. So now I'm very intentional about, about um, leaning into to programs like Catalyst and reading books, et cetera. I love that. And I appreciate that because that's exactly why I started Catalyst. You know, I saw that in myself as well, you know, at, we keep moving up the the ladder and then we are pouring into our, our people, but we forget to take care of ourselves way too often. Yep. And that is no good for anyone. So I'm, I'm excited about opportunities like this, especially in Kansas City. Like it's great to be able to participate in something, um, you know, maybe across the nation and have that diversity of thought and opinion. But I also want to see these sorts of things happen in our community with our leaders, right? And, and helping to kind of build them up again. Yeah. yeah, I appreciate it. Well, thank you so much for your time. I am thrilled to to feature you and have everyone know the amazing woman that I know that you already are um, and, and to uh, have them connect with you and, and uh, get to know a little more about your company as well. I thank you so much for having me, Katie. This has just been a very transparent and authentic moment. You know, we are both of us strong leaders and, um, you know, we we had an aligned mission, but we took different paths to get there when we worked together. And so sometimes that raised tension and look at us now. I right. Know. So this is beautiful. I'm just glad to be here. I know. I love that. And we have a little more time. So we'll give a little peek behind that curtain because it is a curtain that, um, you know, we were put in a tough spot and it was unintentional, but but we had had jobs to do. And unfortunately, we weren't always able to work closely together. And that really stunk for both of us. It really did. But I think we're both um, wiser and smarter and more mature. And we embrace healthy conflict at this point. Right, right. Yeah. Well, I I love you. I love everything. And uh, look forward to uh, coffee, lunches, and drinks soon. <laughs> All of them. Let's right. do it. All of it. <laughs> Thanks so much. Thank you.